Well, thanks for joining me. My name is Brett Andrews. I'm one of the staff members here at New Life. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, speak to us in a way that changes us today, that draws us closer to you, that makes us more like Christ. By the power of your Holy Spirit, speak. Through Christ I pray. Amen. So recently we've wrapped up a series of messages through the Proverbs, and I've spoken, the last message was on friends, and uh, and what is it? What does Christian friendship look like? And so I wanted to share with you one, just one devotional thought to summarize that, to wrap it up a little bit more on the five C's of friendship. This is an original with me. I'm not sure actually who it is original with. But the one thing, the point that I would want to make for us about friendship is that relationships are built on trust. And each of these C's is at the core of them is really how do we develop trust, build trust, deepen trust in relationships, as opposed to eroding trust in relationships. So the first C of a a strong relationship, Christian relationship, is consistency. Consistent. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17, a friend loves at all times, a brother is born for adversity. The one thing about friendships that you, um, the people who are true friends, you can depend on them. They are reliable. That's why we like to think of time-tested friends. You know, there are some friendships that begin really fast and and they look like they could be really great friendships, but sometimes things that begin fast also fade fast. But the thing about friends is that they become like Jesus. They're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Again, part of the reason why Jesus is the best friend is because he is a consistent friend, the same yesterday, today, and forever. When you think of a friend that you really trust, my guess is that you they're kind of predictable for you. You know, I, I think of friends like Pat Ferguson or Marty Chavers or Ron Ferguson or, um, or, or, or Todd Wilson. I can predict for you how they would respond in certain situations. I know them well enough. I've been around them well enough. They have a consistency of character. I can depend on them. Uh, a, a friend loves at all times. A brother is born for adversity and therefore is consistent and dependable. The second C is confidential. Uh, Proverbs 11.13 says, A gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy man keeps a secret. Proverbs 16.28, A perverse man stirs up dissension, and a gossip separates close friends. I love that old line. It's not very funny, but it kind of makes me smile. It says, There are some people who think a secret is something you tell one person at a time. You know, there's some people that you just have a hard time building trust with because if you say something, you've told them something in the past that you've trusted that they would keep to themselves, but they haven't. One of the things about trusted friends is, again, friendship is about intimacy, into me see. The more intimate, the more we allow people to see into us and we see into them, the closer the bond can be. But that requires confidentiality. Somebody has said, a friend is somebody who could destroy you if they want to, but they don't. They share confidences with you and know that they will, you will treat them as precious. Number three C is they are candid. Proverbs 27 verse Five, better is an open rebuke than hidden love. Wounds of a friend can be trusted, but the enemies, but enemies multiply kisses. You can trust because they'll be candid with you. Think about the friends that you trust the most, and you know that they're friends who have also probably told you things that you don't want to hear. Now, if they're kind friends, they'll say it in kind ways. But still, who do you really want around? Do you want somebody who will just tell you what you want to hear, but they conceal for you what's best for you to hear? 
Or do you want people who will be honest with you even though it may be painful on the surface? I remember when I was on my internship in Louisville, I preached one Sunday night, which was kind of a big deal at this place. Um, there were some people on staff who had never been asked to preach twice, and this was the second time I was getting a chance to preach. And and so I uh, was getting down after having preached and ran into one of the friends that I had made that summer and uh, was expecting to hear him say, man, Brett, that was great. Hey, Brett, that's the best. But instead he said, Brett, I love you, but your breath stinks. <laughs> you know, But you have really bad breath. Now there's a part of me that didn't want to hear that, but would you rather somebody say, hey, you have bad breath, and I'm sure you're not aware of it, or would you rather them just not tell you and you be embarrassed? True friends risk candor, even though it may cause hurt initially or even threaten the relationship for being dangerous. They're not self-protective. Number four, friends are constructive. Friends build each other up. Constructive. Ecclesiastes 4, 9. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. <clears throat> if one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls down and has no one to help him up. I preached this morning and my throat is still dry. But I love that picture. That uh, uh, True friends are people who build each other up. They stand by each other. And when you fall down... They pick you up, whether you fall down because it's a stumble, because somebody pushes you, or even because maybe you stumbled on your own. You know, we all need people who will encourage us. There are some people in this world who are just constantly negative, and it's so easy to criticize. It takes very little ability to go around and tear things down. But it takes some skill, some insight to build things up. Good friends are not just candid, tearing down, but they ultimately are saying, but here's the hope. But here's what I see as a positive direction moving forward. Let me ask, are you more critical or more encouraging? When you're around somebody, do they feel more energized as a result or do they feel more depleted? Finally, good friends are committed. They're committed to you and they're committed to Christ. Proverbs 18, 24. A man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. I had the chance to watch my parents, I've had the chance to watch my parents age and my grandparents age. And one of the things that watching them has taught me is how there are all kinds of friends that people have as they journey through life. <clears throat> and I watched friends come and go in their lives, and then I have also seen those friends who've been with them decade after decade after decade. And you know what's interesting? Some of those friends are not, who've been most faithful, are not necessarily the friends that are around all the time. They're the friends that maybe they live at a distance, but they've been friends year over year. And when they pick up, um, it's as though they've never been separated. Um, they're those friends who have seen them through the best and the worst, their faithful friends. I think of people in my home church, for instance, um, Kurt Van Tyle and I were writing back and forth. Kurt, I've known since, I don't know, I was in high school, I suppose. And, um, and he's been an elder in our home church and Sunday school teacher forever. And so whenever we would go home and go to Sunday school, we'd go to Kurt's class. Um, Jan was um, a close friend with my sister, Linda, when they were in, in high school. Um, and although we haven't through the years necessarily 
like been in touch every day. It's just kind of like they're faithful friends. You know, if you have a need, you can depend on them. If you reach out to them, they'll be glad to be your friends. You know, everybody else may not like you, but you can go back and you still have those good old friends. I know if I would call, I know I have called my, my dad, um, 85 year old dad still lives in Meadville. And I know if I would call um, Kurt as I have and said, hey, dad needs a hand with this. Kurt would be there. Or if I said, hey, dad and Mary are sick and they need some food, you know, Kurt and Jan would be right there to help however they could. And it's interesting, it's not like spectacular, it's not like, um, it, uh, something that a lot of people would be like really impressive with, but it's just that committed friendship that comes because we're first of all committed to Christ, we're committed to the church family, and we're committed to each other. And you know the great thing about friendship? You don't have to be special to be a good friend. You don't have to have special gifts. You don't have to have special abilities or personality. When I think of the most consistent, committed friends in my life, I think a lot of these people will never write a book. They'll never be main stage at some big conference. They'll never be running for public office. They'll never be well known by lots of people. But in heaven, they'll be well known as consistent, Christ-like friends. Bottom line, though, is, as I said this morning, there is another word for Christian friendship, and that is discipleship. Jesus told his disciples, I no longer call you my servants. I call you my friends. Discipleship simply means we are Christian friends who both follow Jesus as our king, as our good shepherd, and we are walking with each other, committed to Christ, committed to confidentiality, committed to candor, committed to being constructive, committed to consistency, committed to being considerate so that we walk together closely, not just with each other, but more closely with Christ. Iron sharpens iron, Proverbs 27 verse 17 says, so one person sharpens another. Christian friends sharpen each other to become more like Christ. Now, what's your next step today? Here's the question. How can you be more purposeful as a Christian friend to help your friends be more like Christ? That's discipleship. How can you be more purposeful today? Maybe it's just part of your conversation and you're asking people, so tell me, what are you reading these days in the Bible? Tell me, what's God teaching you these days? I have conversations with Bill Smith all the time and I'll say, so what's God teaching you in your Bible study? What, what um, lessons have you heard God teaching you lately? Maybe you encourage each other. Hey, I, we're gonna, I'm going to do some praying and fasting for something. Would you, I, I need to be accountable for that. Or would you like to pray and fast with me? How can I pray for you? See, think about discipleship not as a program, but as Christian friendship as we walk with each other, as we walk with Christ. I hope you'll take a next step in friendship today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Christ and that we know a friend who sticks closer than a brother in him. We thank you for Christ and we know that we can love others because you first loved us. I thank you for Christ and that we know that he didn't consider what he had as things to be grasped, but he emptied himself and made himself nothing, being a form of a servant. And so we don't have to be takers, we can be givers because Christ is first given to us, trusting that you will take care of us. Help us to be the kind of friends to the people around us that you would have us to be. Help us to be disciples who make disciples obedient to your callings. Through Christ I pray. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you soon.